In today's etiquette chat, I'm going to share five rude questions you might receive and how to respond to them with elegance and class. Hi everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I am the author of the Madame Chic series, including Polish Your Poise with Madame Chic, and also the author of Connoisseur Kids. I have a passion for etiquette, and I firmly believe that every child and adult should at least take one etiquette class in their lifetime and own at least one etiquette book, because we would be able to interact with each other with much more kindness and compassion. So recently on my community tab, I posed a question to all of you asking, what is the rudest question you have ever received? And if you haven't seen that community tab post, you have got to go there and read. There's over 500 comments, but you won't believe some of the things that people have been asked. And a lot of the time, the people who are asking these rude questions don't know that they're being rude. So we can all learn a lot from this. Maybe you have asked some of these questions in your life and had the best intentions. Now, sometimes people are definitely trying to be rude. So there's two different <laughs> types of situations here. But today I am going to go over five rude questions that are extremely common and how you can react to them. All right, the number one rude question that my audience here at The Daily Connoisseur has ever received is, when are you due when they're not actually pregnant? This has happened to so many people. It's actually happened to me before, and it's happened to you because in the comment section of that community tab, there are so many people who said this happened to them and so many thumbs up to their comment. So the general rule is, even if you are 100% certain that the woman you're speaking to is pregnant, don't comment on that because she might not want to reveal that information anything could have happened. She might have just had the baby and is insecure about the tummy that she still has. Or the woman might have some sort of health issue that makes her stomach look larger or distended and she might be self-conscious about that. Either way, just don't say anything at all. If she would like to share that she's pregnant with you, let her do so. So it's just in general a good rule to not comment on that because I truly believe that the people who ask, oh, when are you due? They have good intentions. They're not trying to insult you. They just think you're pregnant. And it's going to hurt your feelings if you are not pregnant and you think and someone thinks that you are. So how do you respond to this if someone says, when are you due? Well, first of all, I want to put this out there. If you are out in public and a complete stranger kind of shouts something to you or just says something to you in passing, you do not need to respond to them. So you can just simply smile and keep walking. <laughs> Let's say if someone's saying that to you in passing, and that's perfectly acceptable. If you're in a conversation with someone you met and they ask you when you're due, you could simply say, I'm not pregnant, but thank you. And that awkward silence will hang there for a little bit and then you could change the subject. But you don't need to react in a negative way, even if you do feel negative emotions. You could just simply turn that off and say, I'm not expecting, but thank you. Or something very brief like that. So a very simple, I'm not expecting, but thank you, is perfectly fine. The person who asked the question will probably feel bad and you can move on with your conversation. <laughs> the second uh, rude question is something that is so prevalent in America. In fact, when you meet someone, this is one of the first things they ask you, especially if you're a man. They do also ask you if you're a woman and then there's a sort of nuances to that too. But this is the second rude question. What do you do for a living? So when you meet somebody for the first time, it is not polite to ask them what they do for a living right away. Eventually, if they start to allude to their work or you tend to talk about that, or if you're at a networking event, for example, it's perfectly all right to speak about it. When you first meet someone, asking them what they do for a living is, is a very loaded question because by that, you are sort of indicating to them that you are about to judge them based on what they do, whether that's true or not. It also is an indication of how much money they make if they tell you the field that they're in 
And basically you're placing value on what they do. And we are all more than what we do, whatever our job is in life. That's not who we are. It's just a small facet about our life. So it's actually quite uh, rude to ask people what they do for a living. So here's how you respond to this question. You could either tell them what you do for a living if you don't mind, or if you don't feel comfortable sharing what you do for a living, you could say the general field that you work in and then move to talking about something that you enjoy doing, like a hobby. My friend Micah Meyer, who's an etiquette coach, she also recommends this as well. So for example, if somebody said, what do you do for a living, Jennifer? And I didn't really feel like telling them about what I do because I, I encounter this a lot because what I do is kind of is strange. And sometimes when people find out, they act a little different around me. So I sometimes will say, oh, I'm a writer. And then what you can say is uh, you can pivot towards something you're passionate about. But in my spare time, I love to garden and play the piano. What do you like to do in your spare time? So you could flip it on them and ask them about their hobbies, for example. And that's a wonderful tip that I learned from my friend Micah, I love that. So you can guide the conversation where you want it to go and then ask them, uh, what they like to do. Never feel that you have to divulge information about yourself if it doesn't make you comfortable. Now you might feel socially awkward when you first meet someone and really not know what to ask them. So you might just ask them out of exasperation, not knowing what else to talk about. So if that's the case, if you're about to go into a social situation where you're meeting new people, have a few questions that you can ask them that don't relate to what they do for a living. So you could say, oh, what do you like to do on the weekends? Or um, where have you traveled recently that's uh, been interesting? Ask them things like that to get the conversation going. I also wanted to discuss this facet of it. A lot of women get this question and they are homemakers and they don't have a career outside of the home. And when they tell someone that, the other person will then ask them a rude question about that or maybe not be interested in them anymore and walk away. That is another reason why this is a rude question. All introverts will be able to relate to my third rudest question you can ask, and that is, why are you so quiet? Are you sad? Or are you mad? Is something wrong? <laughs> we introverts have been asked this question so many times and it's extremely irritating and it's rude. So yes, if there's something clearly wrong, like you're sitting on a park bench bawling your eyes out, someone is going to ask you why you're so sad. But in general, it's not polite to ask someone why they are so quiet because they're is a gigantic portion of the population who um, consider themselves to be introverted and we tend to be quieter in social settings. We're not the life of the party, we're not constantly talking. And so people will ask you likely, why are you so quiet? Now, how do you respond to this without getting defensive? Someone will say, why are you so quiet? Well, the sassy part of you might wanna say, why are you so loud? <laughs> but don't say that. So a way that you could respond is by saying, I really enjoy listening to people more than I do talking. Or you could just uh, elegantly brush that off a little bit, but try not to dwell on the subject. Now offshoots of this are why do you look mad and why do you look sad? I've gotten all of these questions, mainly in college. I think it's like I was thrust into my college experience at a very social school and going out to parties, I would be very quiet. So people, strangers, new friends would come up to me. Are you sad? Why are you so quiet? And um, I would just simply shrug and say, no, I'm not sad, but then you get defensive. So don't be defensive and simply say, uh, yes, I'm fine. I'm perfectly happy. I just enjoy listening to you talk. You could say something like that. The fourth rudest question you could ask someone is to ask them when they are going to have children. This is a very difficult question that a lot of people receive. It's completely avoidable. Just don't ask that question. So a lot of people will get married and then immediately relatives, friends, strangers will all ask, when are you going to start having children? Obviously, we should not ask this question of people for many reasons. The first being that they might be trying to have children and not able to conceive and it's a painful uh, thing in their life, a private matter. Another thing is that we should not assume that everybody wants to have children. It's, we don't need to assume that. And that could get irritating if you are a married couple and your entire married life, people are asking you when you're going to have children. So we just shouldn't ask that question at all. On the flip side of this, if you have a lot of children, you might get questions like, don't you know what causes that? 
or don't you have a TV? A lot of people said this in the community tab posts. Those questions are equally rude because it's just commenting on someone's lifestyle, life choices, and family choices, which are intensely private matters. So if someone asks you, when are you going to have children? You could simply say, that's a private matter and smile, and they will hopefully get the hint and change the subject. But people should know that they've crossed a boundary and you don't need to uh, giggle uncomfortably or uh, give them some pseudo answer that they're looking for. You could simply say, that's a private matter between me and my husband, thank you. And hopefully they will get the hint and not ask anymore. So a lot of the times we women like to be people pleasers and we don't wanna be rude, but it is perfectly fine to set a firm boundary and not answer the question. Okay, question number five. Now this is the question that I have been asked in my life, in my personal life, um, that I found to be very rude. Now, of course, I'm on YouTube, so I get asked rude questions every day on the internet, but it's different when someone in real life asks you these questions. Now, all people who are biracial like myself might be able to relate to this. If you are ethnically ambiguous, people might look at you and say, hmm, I wonder where you're from or what your background is. And that's perfectly fine. You are intriguing and people want to know more about you and your background, but it's the way they ask the question. So I have been asked the question in this particular phraseology so many times I can't even count. Someone will look at me like they're really studying me and they'll say what are you mixed with <laughs> that's the question I have been asked this question so many times what are you mixed with so they're trying to figure out where my background is where I'm from and I appreciate that they're interested but it's a rude way to ask the question now I have no problem answering this question so I simply tell people I am Caucasian and Panamanian which I am my father's white my mother's from Panama and I uh, have a mixed ethnicity. But I do find the question when it's posed to be quite rude. Now, a lot of people in the community tab post dealt with this as well. Some people say that um, strangers will go up to them and touch their hair and ask them what, what their ethnicity is or what they're mixed with. And it makes them feel like uh, some circus animal or something, like they're looking at them in that way. So it is very rude to ask people this question. Another thing that we get asked uh, is, someone will say, where are you from? And for example, I would say, I'm from California. No, I mean, where are you from? <laughs> That's what they'll say. I'm from California. I know what they're driving at. They want to know what my ethnicity is, what my background is. But again, it's quite rude to ask. If somebody wants to uh, divulge their family ancestry to you, they will do that, but you should never ask. You can simply um, answer the question, and which is usually what I do if I don't have a problem with it, or you could simply smile and not respond, or you could change the subject and ask them a question about themselves. You could simply say, I'm from wherever you're from, and then change the subject. Now with all of these rude questions, you have to look at the bright side. The bright side is somebody is interested in you, they find you interesting and intriguing, and they want to know more about you. But the problem is that all of these questions can be rather intrusive and not formed properly. So the best thing to do is to keep calm and remain classy and to know that you don't owe anybody an explanation about anything. You don't need to tell anybody how much money you make. You don't need to tell anybody uh, what you do for a living. You don't need to tell them your family ancestry, your background, or whether or not you're pregnant or when you're going to have children. These are all deeply personal questions and you can keep them to yourself and you don't need to apologize for it you do need to have boundaries set up. So I hope that this uh, etiquette chat gave you a lot to think about and maybe gave you some advice and empowered you to handle these situations in an elegant manner when they do come up. Thank you so much for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. I would love to hear your thoughts on this subject. What is the rudest question you ever received? How did you respond? What other tips do you have for all of us? Let us know in the comment section down below and your comment could be chosen as comment of the week on The Daily Connoisseur. Thanks so much, everyone. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.